Welcome to the Oral Gavage Instructional Video in Mice Utilizing Flexible Feeding Tubes. Presented by Instec Laboratories and Veterinary Bioscience Institute. This video will address the following topics. Advantages of utilizing flexible feeding tubes. Importance of observation before and after the procedure. Selection of the appropriately sized flexible feeding tube proper restraint of the animal, proper dosing technique, and discussion of potential complications. First, let's review the advantages. The flexibility of the feeding tubes decreases the risk of perforation to the stomach and esophagus. The soft rounded tip decreases friction and drag and it also decreases the risk of perforation of the stomach and esophagus. These feeding tubes are sterile and disposable, which means that there is no added time or cost spent cleaning and sterilizing, and there is also not the possibility of cross-contamination or compound crossover. Because tubes are translucent, you can visualize the administration of the compounds. In addition to the elastomer tip, flexible feeding tubes are also available with a straight tip. These straight tips have a larger inner diameter to accommodate viscous compounds and the added ability to wipe the tip clean. Prior to gavaging, make sure to observe the animal in and outside of its cage, not only to detect any abnormalities in behavior or physical status, but also to note normal respiratory rate and effort. The same observation should be made after gavaging to make sure there were no significant changes resulting from the procedure. It is important to select the correct size of feeding tube to ensure proper delivery of the compound as well as to avoid injury to the animal. Here are various sizes of mouse feeding tubes. There are general size guidelines according to the weight of the mouse. The FTP20-38 is the most commonly used size for mice. Here we see veterinary technicians assessing the appropriate size feeding tube to use in this mouse. The feeding tube should be the length of the mouth to the bottom of the sternum. If it is too short, contents could be aspirated, and if it is too long, the risk of perforation increases. The first two feeding tubes are too long. This last feeding tube you can see is the appropriate size for this mouse. Now we will address restraint of the animal. Proper restraint is the most important part of a successful gavaging procedure, critical for both the safety and comfort of the animal and safety of the technician. Gently but firmly grasp the mouse by the base of the tail. Then use the thumb and index finger to gently grasp the nape of the neck, holding on to the mouse by the scruff. Then confidently lift the mouse by the scruff and hold the mouse in an upright position. Be sure to lift the mouse off the surface so that the mouse cannot use its back legs for leverage. Here is the same restraint technique from another angle demonstrating how the middle finger is used to stabilize the mouse's neck and head. The mouse should appear as comfortable and relaxed as possible as measured by respiratory rate and effort that are within normal limits. Here we have an alternate two-handed restraint technique. Gently but firmly grasp the mouse by the base of the tail with one hand while using the other hand to grasp the mouse by the scruff at the nape of the neck. The thumb and index finger will be used to grasp the scruff 
as in the previous technique. Here we see the technician wrapping the tail around her fingers from a different angle. Here is a third restraint technique that can be used for calmer mice. It tends to provide the least amount of stability during restraint. Again, be sure to lift the mouse off the surface so that the mouse cannot use its back legs for leverage. Here we see that the mouse's respiratory rate, effort, and color are all within normal limits after restraint. Now let's look at the actual dosing procedure. The feeding tube should be inserted into the mouth to the right or left of midline. Entering from the side will reduce the chance that the mouse will bite the tube. Little to no resistance should be encountered as resistance can be an indicator that the tube has entered the trachea. In addition, administration should stop immediately if fluid is noted bubbling from the nose. This is an indicator of aspiration. Now please watch dosing with an alternate restraint technique. Compound administration should be controlled but swift as taking too much time could result in animal distress, but instilling compounds too quickly can result in reflux. The entire volume of compound should be administered before the feeding tube is withdrawn. The mouse should be observed after the procedure to make sure that the respiratory rate and effort is within normal limits. Once the mouse is determined to have been gavaged successfully, it should be returned to its cage. Complications from any gavaging procedure include the chance of aspiration, reflux, or perforation of the stomach or esophagus. In order to minimize aspiration complications, a technician gavaging for the first time should practice with a small amount of saline because even if this is aspirated, a small amount of saline can be absorbed by the lungs. Here you can see perforation from a metal tube. This perforation is much less likely to occur with a plastic feeding tube. In conclusion, for gavage, using a flexible feeding tube is preferred. These tubes are less likely to cause damage, are sterile and disposable. These flexible feeding tubes directly support the three R's of research. Just as with any improved technology, there will be a slight learning curve when learning to use these flexible feeding tubes. When you are first starting out, try a variety of feeding tube sizes to find the one that works best for you. You can request a free sample pack from www.insteclabs.com.